Hello everybody, let's try to solve this rigid body problem. If you need a review on what rigid bodies are, I suggest you check out the first problem I did. I go in detail with uh, an explanation for what it's about. So for this example here, we have an overhanging beam which is supported by a pin at A and a two-force strut BC. Determine the horizontal and vertical components of the reactions at A and the reactions at B on the beam. So what's a two-force member? What is this BC that they're talking about? Let me just draw a sketch of it over here so we can kind of explain what's going on. So this is our two-force member. There are rules that need to be satisfied for a two-force member to be in equilibrium, right? What is a two-force member in the first place? It's just a member that has two forces applied to it. So let's say we have F1 and F2, all right? So in order, in order for this member to actually meet the requirements of equilibrium, we know that the forces F1 and F2 need to have the same magnitude. So same magnitude for F1 and F2. So if F1 was 100, F2 would also be 100, right? Number two, the second requirement for equilibrium will be that F1 and F2 must be acting in opposite directions from each other. So F1 F2 opposite directions. So if F1 was negative 100, F2 is positive 100, right? So why is this not satisfying equilibrium? It's because we still have a distance between these two forces that will create a couple moment, right? We remember talking about that a little bit earlier. So these are actually your force requirements for equilibrium. And then your moment requirement is going to be that F1 and F2 act on the same line of action. Line of action. So what does that mean? This member is running in this direction diagonally. So F1 and F2 should be acting like this. Now these forces will cancel each other out, equal magnitude in opposite directions, and there is no moment being created. Why? Because it's running along the line of action of this member. So now that's out of the way, we can actually go ahead and solve this problem. Okay, so now we know everything about a two-force member. Let's go ahead with solving this problem. I've updated the problem to make our lives a little bit easier. I've added a special triangle here because you know this two meters here and 1.5 meters here actually correlates to a special triangle three, four, five, right? So this will help us solve for components of FB, the Y component and the X component. And we also have the reactions at A, which are AY and AX because the pin, we have the two reactions for every pin. But why didn't I draw it for C? This is because the reactions at C are gonna have no impact on the values for the reactions at A or B, right? Only FC matters and FB matters. And since FB is going to equal FC, we don't even need to consider this, right? So now we can actually get into this problem. We have a lot of different unknowns, right? So the first thing that jumps out to me is to solve for summation of moment is equal to zero. And we have two components at the A point. So it'd be easiest to take it from A, which means we can solve for FB. So now we can proceed. We have to choose a convention, the one I showed previously. So 600 is going downwards. That means it's going to be negative. We have one meter distance away from A and that's the first part done. Now we have at B, which is a little tougher. It's gonna to be positive because this B component is gonna be upwards like this, F, B, Y. But we still consider F, B for now because we haven't actually solved for it. So if we took the Y component using the special triangle, it would actually be FB three over five. Then the distance away from A is gonna be two meters. Cool. Then we have the 800 Newton force, which is going to be negative because it's going downwards, creating once again, a clockwise motion. So we have 800 Newtons times the distance away from A, which is four meters. And the moment here, it's gonna be negative 900 newton meter once again going clockwise 
we can isolate for FB. And actually solving this, we notice that all of the signs are going to cancel out because we have negative on this side and all negatives on this side when it's brought over. So simply solving this problem, we now have the number 3196.67 newtons. So that's the first part of our problem solved. Now we need to consider the summation of forces in the y direction to get that a y component. So what do we have? We are going to have a y positive negative 600 newtons. Then we have the f b y that we saw for earlier. We have to consider first f b three nine one six point six seven newtons times our special triangle once again. 3 over 5 for that y component we consider the 3. Minus 800 newtons and then we can solve for a y. And when you solve for a y you notice that you actually can't cancel out the signs here. So negative a y is going to equal to this number on the other side 950 newtons. But this is now a problem, right? Because we have a negative here, but we have a positive answer here. So what does this mean? This means we assumed wrong. We simply drew it wrong in our drawing. So in reality, this force is actually going downwards instead of upwards. So instead of updating your drawing, what I would advise doing is just write the answer with the positive sign but also suggest the direction that it's going down, right? That's the best way to avoid confusion because if you redraw this, then your signs aren't gonna make sense in the equation. So that's the best way to go about doing it in my opinion. And then lastly, I'll squeeze it in over here on this side, summation of forces at x is equal to zero. We have to solve for ax, right? So we have zero is equal to ax plus the fbx component, right? It's going to be acting like that, FBX here. We take that number for FB, and we do the same thing we did for the Y, which is take 4 over 5 instead for that component. And then you simply solve for AX, and it's going to be the same thing that happened before. We have 3133.33 newtons. So that once again means that we assumed wrong, right? Right here. So we actually know that AX is going to be 3133.33 newtons to the left instead of to the right. Okay? That is your three final answers for this problem. And I hope this helped.